Hey, it's Lauren. This is an excerpt from the full length episode. To listen to the entire episode, head to the show notes and follow the link. This episode has been brought to you by the Afterlight Institute. Ignite the light, magic, and miracles within. I think one of the things that um, you really strike me as a person who is really in tune with themselves, and I know that would be a big focus for you probably as far as eating, you know, for medicinally, like using food to like heal your body and all that. I mean, how do people who aren't as connected with themselves sort of begin that journey. Because when I'm talking about eating for the seasons, I suppose I sometimes have to Google it. (laughs) Like what is the food right now? Because like I said earlier, I kind of get in the habit where I just eat broccoli all year, or I just eat, you know, carrots all the time, all year. Whereas there are some times of the year where maybe that actually would be a natural fit and other times maybe not so much. Yeah, for sure. And Hey, like I eat broccoli and carrots all the time too. Like, especially my husband is not as adventurous in food too. So I have to have, you know, the classic staples that I know he's going to eat as well. And so what I'll do is I'll, you know, have all of the classics, especially also living in a small town. We don't have a lot of um, accessibility to more of the seasonal foods sometimes, you know, we've got a lot of corn fields and wheat fields, but we don't have a lot of, you know, actual vegetables growing around us. Um, So really just using what you have available to you. And like what I'll do instead is just incorporate little things, you know, into my daily routine that are seasonal. Like I said, with the blueberries or what I've really been obsessed with lately are fennel. So I've been using the fennel tops in um, like pestos and dips and things like that. And then I've been roasting the actual fennel bulb and like putting spices and olive oil on it and mixing in with other vegetables. And it's just such a, I don't know, a refreshing sort of change to just your typical sort of vegetables. So just take like, you know, one or two vegetables that are in season now and just make something totally new with them or throw them into something that you already know how to make like a stir fry. Like you could totally add fennel bulb to a stir fry. It'd be really good. Um, And then I think also just like you kind of mentioned, knowing uh, what your body needs and being in tune with your body. And I think if you're not really sure of where to start, I think understand, like just looking at your, your chart, like um, can give you a really good idea. Like as a Scorpio sun and moon, it's a water element. It's a fixed sign, which means there's a lot of stagnation. It can be cold because of water. So there's a lot of cold stagnation sort of in my constitution. And so I really need more like fiery, spicy, warming herbs and foods to sort of balance out my regular, you know, nature and all of that. Because otherwise, you know, if you're too cold, too stagnant for too long, then, you know, other sort of funguses and like that sort of thing can start to sort of germinate and we don't want that. So sort of just understanding your own sort of zodiac sign, zodiac chart, a sun sign, and figuring out what sort of balances that out is a great place to start too. Oh, that's so great because I've heard of, you know, people looking at your doshas and that sort of thing, but I haven't ever had somebody say, look at your astrology chart in terms of what to eat. I mean, I have a moon in cancer, but then I'm an Aries, so I'm very fiery, but then I'm always freezing. So you know, but I know that, yeah, yeah, it's really interesting. Um, what are some of your favorite recipes to go to in the seasons? Do you have a couple of staple recipes that you're like, oh yeah, it's summer, we're going with this, it's winter, we're going with this. Would you be willing to share one or two of those? Yeah, for sure. Uh, the one that just came to my mind when you mentioned it was it's a Polish recipe. Like I said, I'm really trying to get back into touch with my sort of ancestral roots. And I think food is a huge part of that is understanding, you know, your ancestors is through food. Even if you don't have a lot of like written texts, you can still connect with them and your roots through food. Um, and one of them is a really great summer staple called Klodnik. And it's basically a cold soup. It's a cold beet soup. So there's the main ingredient is beets and there's cucumbers and green onions and a hard boiled egg. And it's just this beautiful, bright pink soup. So if you don't know what that is, it's kind of like a gazpacho if um, you make those at all. And it's not green though, but it's a very like beautiful pink refreshing soup because nobody wants to 
you know, heat anything up during the summer. So anything that's nice and cold to balance out the fire element of summer is really, I don't know, invigorating and refreshing for me. And also though, you could sort of flip that around and if it's winter where you are, then you could make a heated beet soup. And it's not called Klodnik, but you could definitely do like stews are my absolute like favorite thing to do during winter because you can throw it in the slow cooker. It's so good. You can add medicinal mushrooms like reishi and lion's mane, um, any of those really tough roots that you need to cook for a long time. Plus they're so good for the immune system, which you really need to bolster during winter. So I absolutely love doing a really delicious mushroom, like medicinal mushroom stew on top of that. So either of those, it's a good, I think it's a good balance for sure. And then obviously the warm soup balances out the water element of winter. So you need to know your own body sort of influences, but also right now, if it's like 90 degrees where I am, like some nice water balancing sort of foods is absolutely necessary for sure. (laughs) 